أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم آباؤهم قوم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم مظلالا فهي إلى اللذقان فهي إلى اللذقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية أصحاب القرية إذ جاء المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أين ذكرتم أين ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم A lot of our young friends, those who are in their late teens to the late twenties, generally they have a barrier between them and those who practice Islam. A lot of them say that those people who practice Islam, who are on deen, they look down on us. So a lot of our non-practicing youth have this feeling within their hearts that those people who are on deen in general Look down on us. Shaykh al-Islam Mufti Muhammad Taqi Uthmani Damat Baragatul Aliyah dedicates a whole chapter of this in his Islai Khutbat, his lecture. And he says, says this is true. That a lot of people who practice Islam, they look down on those people who don't practice Islam. And this results from pride. Mu'atani Rahmatullah Alayhi would say that it is fine to tell the sinner off, to correct him, but do not look down on him. Furthermore, even if you have been given the task of punishing him, even then do not look down on him. And 
Hazrat gives an, an example. The king tells the executioner that my son, the prince, has committed a crime. Execute him or punish him. Now the executioner, when he is executing or punishing the prince, he does not consider himself to be better than the prince. He knows his awqat. He knows I am only being given the duty of punishment. Otherwise, the person I am punishing, he is better than me. Mu'tan rahmatullahi was a great murshid and a great muslih of his time. And he was a person who would correct people there and then. Yet, Mu'tami rahmatullahi would say, whenever I correct anybody, in my heart I consider myself to be the executioner and the person I am correcting to be the prince. That they never allowed pride to get the better themselves. Shaykh Islam Mufti Muhammad Taqi Uthman Dhamma Barakatuh mentions, it is fine to hate sin, but don't hate a sinner. Have hatred for sharab, for wine, have hatred for zina, but don't hate the person committing the act. Many of our young friends are involved in different vices. We hate the guna, we do not hate the youngster. Rather, he mentions, Dhamad Bargadum, that hate kufar, hate disbelief, but do not hate the disbeliever. So in Islam, we are not even commanded to hate the disbeliever. Rather, hate the act of kufar, or the belief of kufar. And just like when a person, he is ill, the doctors treat him with compassion and care. Rather, if you look at the paramedics and the doctors, the training they are given, a person comes, he has just committed murder. The police have arrested him, he has become injured. The paramedics and doctors will give him the exact same treatment they give to anybody else, despite knowing him to be a criminal. And this is part of their job. They are told to treat everyone equally, to give treatment to everyone equally, despite who they may be. So if we can understand this from a profession, then it becomes easier to understand this from an Islamic perspective. That rather we have sympathy for those people who are involved in sin. We don't look down on them. We do not consider ourselves to be better than those people who are involved in sin. One of the many reasons why we should not look down on those people who commit sin is because perhaps Allah Ta'ala will give them tawfiq to do tawbah and they may become better than us. So we have to have sympathy for those who are involved in sin. That's why some of the ulama mention, when a person becomes ill and you go visit them, you read a dua. That whoever reads this dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him from this illness. That, O oh Allah, it is a fadl and your grace that you have saved me from this illness. Similarly, a person, when he sees a person involved in sin, he should also read the same dua. That, O oh Allah, it is your fadl and your grace that you have saved me from this illness. So for a person who considers himself to be religious, and to see a person who is not exactly practicing, and then to look down on him, this is misguidance from shaitan. One of the ways shaitan misguides a practicing person is by making him feel that he's better than those people who are not as practicing than him. So shaitan makes two kinds of efforts. The first effort shaitan makes is to keep people away from deen and keep them occupied in sin. The second effort he makes is he makes effort on those people who are already on deen. The effort he makes he tries to make them consider themselves 
to be better than others. And through that, he is able to destroy their good deeds. A person will only consider himself to be better than others when he considers his own good deeds. When he thinks that these good deeds I have done are because of my own kamal or my own good. Rather, when a person carries out any form of good deed, he should remember that every good deed I have done, it is because of the fadl and the, virt- the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to carry out this good deed, otherwise I would not have been able to do this good deed. The second thing he should worry about is has this good deed been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you are not sure and you can't be sure till the day of Qiyamah that my amal have been accepted, then how can you use the very same amal and then consider yourself to be better than others? So rather you should say that every action I am doing, all the good deeds I am doing, it is the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many people of the past, very pious people of the past, lost their vilayat and lost their piety due to them considering themselves to be better than others. So rather my friends, we should give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the blessings of doing amal. To carry out any good deed is actually a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And rather be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has allowed us to carry out our duty. At the same time, ulama inform us we should also do istighfar as well. Because the good deeds we are doing, most definitely we are not fulfilling the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the namaz we are praying, the very same deed through which you consider yourself to be better than a person who is not reading salah. The very same deed. You are definitely not fulfilling the right of Allah through your salah. So now, the very same deed you are using to think yourself to be better than others, that deed is not fulfilling the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then how can you use the very same deed to consider yourself to be better than anybody else? There was one story regarding a very pious person who had many followers. And one day he came up across a person who was a non-Muslim and he was herding his swine. This pious person looked down on this non-Muslim and thought to himself, hmm, I am better than him. Look at me, I have murids. Look at him, he's a non-Muslim and he's, he's herding his, looking after his swine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like this arrogance and because of this for a long period of time this person became misguided. Only after dua and crying of his murid for such a long time that he was able to come back on the right path. So my friends I conclude that we should not consider ourselves to be better than anyone. Rather we should consider ourselves to be insignificant. And any good deed we have done, we make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we also do istighfar. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding of our da'wana. Alhamdulillah.